Firstly, I am grateful to receive this chance being with you today. Interview with Ole Health Magazine is an honor for me. I finished my uh, medical education in 1986 in Atatürk University. Then I worked as GP and had a compulsory military service later. In 1990, I started education and training in medical uh, and clinical biochemistry. In 1992, I received a scholarship for a PhD in immunology area. I went to Glasgow University, Faculty of Medicine Immunology Department. It was a landmark in my life. My uh, supervisor, Professor Liu, who is the member of Royal Science Academy, be became my idol and uh, mentor. Having completed my PhD thesis, I came back to Turkey and my academic life continued in this area. In uh, 2008, uh, I received professorship post in Gazi University, Faculty of Medicine. Uh, I am the head of basic medical science department at the moment. In addition, I had duties in several non-governmental organizations and uh, professional organizations. I am the vice president of Society of Fighting Against Mobbing as well. I was the chair of Ankara Medical Ch Chamber for four years between 2016 and uh, 2020. And now I am here with you. COVID-19 disease is an infection caused by SARS-CoV-2 virus that has recently appeared in uh, 2019. An epidemic is a disease that affects a large number of people with a community, population or region. A pandemic is an epidemic that spread over multiple countries or continents. Endemic is something that belongs to a particular people or country. We call COVID-19 as a pandemic disease because it has a passport. A pandemic is an epidemic that travels from country to another country, from continent to another continent worldwide. Immune response to SARS-CoV-2 involves both cell-mediated immunity and antibody production. As you know, it is an intracellular infection, therefore cell-mediated immune response is much more important. T cell responses against SARS-CoV-2 uh, spike protein have been characterized and correlate well uh, with uh, IgG and IgA antibody uh, titrus in uh, COVID-19 patients. Sedate post T cells are the main inflammatory cells and play a vital role in virus, uh, virus clearance. Uh, NK cells uh, means natural killer cells play a role at the beginning of early infection period as an arm of natural immune system. When NK cells cannot manage healing of infection in the body, T cells take place. CD4 post cells produce cytokines and triggers the both antibody production by B cells and cell mediated immunity and by activating macrophages, of course, other antigen presenting cells. CD8 post, uh, 8 post cells and so on. And finally, humoral and cellular immune response together work against the COVID-19 infection. In this disease, cytokine storm can happen. Cytokine storm means production and release of huge amount of pro-inflammatory cytokines. This is an unpleasant and undesirable clinical outcome. If it happens, in the cases in intensive care units, it should be stopped to save life. Okay, common treatment for COVID-19 infection approved by FDA, the use of hydroxychloroquine sulfate, which is an antimalarial drug, and other antiviral drugs such as remdesivir. There is no specific treatment yet for COVID-19. Convalescent plasma and hyperimmune globulin are used as well as anticoagulants. There are many studies. 880 clinical trial studies throughout the world uh, present at the moment and they are aimed to discover or to invent novel drugs. 
I can't talk about all of them, but I can give some examples from promising uh, clinical uh, trials. Uh, for instance, NT17, which is a long-lasting IL-7. Uh, uh, it is uh, activator of B-cells, and then it plays role in B-cell differentiation steps as well. And some minerals, such as zinc combinations with the conventional treatment. And when pulmonary hyper inflammation happens is countered in clinics. The use of tocilizumab or rexolitinib in order to prevent cytokine storm. Another uh, clinical trial, fluoxetin, to prevent depression in the cases because we know depression uh, we encounter in very high number in this disease. And pulsed inhaled uh, nitric oxide for the treatment of patients with the mild or moderate COVID-19 patients. And vitamin D3 combination with the conventional treatment. Inhalational ibuprofen in patients with acute respiratory pathology. And some other combinatorial treatments in strategies mentioned previously. Uh, as to prevention of COVID-19, uh, it means vaccination trials. Uh, there are over 140 vaccine trials uh, throughout the world. Uh, I don't know which one uh, will succeed uh, in early time. Surely people with immunodeficiency, any kind of, can suffer from disease badly. If any case, have primary or secondary immunodeficiency due to some immunosuppressant treatments should be protected with full effort. Cases with rheumatological disease are treated by immunosuppressant drugs. They are another risk factors. People with oncological disease are another risk group. And pulmonary disease such as COPD and asthma are comorbidity factors for COVID-19. I can say uh, about other diseases. Uh, yes, as I mentioned before, T-cell immunity and cellular immune response are crucial for the disease called as COVID-19. T-cell immunity provides long-term protection uh, since uh, COVID-19 is an intracellular infection. Herd immunity means that indirect protection of other individuals in the event that the community develops protection against an infectious disease with a high transmission rate. Community immunity can develop with vaccination or previous infections. Uh, some factors have come to the fore for SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is the COVID-19 agent. Firstly, high infectivity of asymptomatic case was reported. Another problem for COVID-19 is that there is uncertainty in the immunity levels of individuals who suffered from the disease and whether they can remain immune lifelong, we don't know. And considering that the fatality rate in our country is 2.5% in Turkey, for instance, one can say that herd immunity policies leading to recovery after being infected of an estimated 40 million of population and to the death of 1 million people will be a wrong strategy for low and middle income countries. We do not recommend to all politicians about herd immunity. B cells produce antibodies against appropriate uh, epitopes, in particular spike proteins epitopes of SARS CoV 2 virus. Then these antibodies prevent attachment of viruses to alveolar cells and its entry into the cells. T cells specific for SARS CoV 2 virus antigenic epitopes are crucial arm of the immune response. On the other hand, B cells are also antigen presenting cells. They engulf viruses via receptor mediated endostosis by means of antibody receptors on the surface of B cells, then process the antigen and presenting epitopes to T cells via their MHC molecules. Therefore, there is a cross talk between T and B cells. 
they work together and fight against virus in collaboration. As in novel, children are less suffered from COVID-19. They have a more asymptomatic disease of COVID-19. Thymus gland may play a key role in this regard as it is active in the childhood than adulthood. It is known that thymus houses mainly T lymphocytes and thymus is a place for T cell education. It was found that uh, starting from the first year of life, CD138 post plasma cells begin uh, to accumulate in perivascular space of thymus. I mentioned about T and B cells crosstalk at the beginning. It happens also inside the thymus. As we know, thymus works better in childhood and thymus atrophies with age. If you ask to me why children is less affected by the disease, I can say easily ACE receptors are in low number in alveolar cells of child children. Therefore, viruses cannot find sufficient space for entry into the cells. It is proven fact, however, I cannot say that the thymus function better in children prevents the virus or the severe course of the disease. There is a hypothesis, but not approved yet. Social isolation measurements and surveillance works must be applied in all countries based on the indications of the WHO and health managers should promote body temperature measurements, masking, hygiene, and hand washing based on uh, WHO regulations, WHO. And finally, it is clear that transparent sharing of accurate data by the health authorities with the stakeholders is crucial for the optimal management of health policies and services Thank you very much for giving chance to me for interview with Ali Health Magazine. Thank you.